Hello folks and welcome back to Crazy Town. Today we're going to look at an amenity disc unit. Yes, another one. I apologize for not going back to the Sony well in this particular video. I'm taking a, a bit of an extended break because the TCK75 fought me for so long, but uh, yeah. The other thing is it's 34 degrees and climbing again outside, so I don't really want to get into a cassette deck today. I can just see myself getting in, into that triple six ES and getting frustrated and breaking something. So uh, I thought maybe we'd do another one of these today. This folks is a Victor XUD 400 Mark II, three disc changer and a mini disc combo deck. And as usual, Victor means JVC. So. Uh, yeah, so this could go either way. It could go either really well or really not so well, but uh, we'll find out as the time goes by. I'll try to get as much done on this as I can today before I overheat or something. I've got a fan blowing on me, so that's helping a little bit, but uh, before we really get into this, I got some stuff to show you. First, I got some new feet for the Marantz unit. I kind of like the way these look, so... Uh, I went ahead and bought them. I think they'll do well. They're really quite big, but uh, yeah, those were the factory feet anyway for that deck, so uh, I think those will look really good on that machine. The other thing to show you is I broke down and bought that fancy multimeter 12 volt vids has been showing on his videos. This is the one with the IR camera in it. And uh, I just thought that if I was uh, working on that big lab group and amplifier, it might be nice to have IR functionality. So uh, I went ahead and did it. And yeah, as you can see in the reflection there, I've got my new shop lights too. They are extremely bright. So I hope they work well. Anyway, maybe we'll get a chance to use this today. Maybe we won't. I don't know. And uh, the other thing I wanted to announce is I just bought my 34th cassette deck. At least I think it's 34. It might be 35. I might be losing count of all the stuff I've got now. I found another one in Japan, basically in roughly the same condition as my TZK75 was for the same price, so I went ahead and bought it. It is a Technics RSM275XC. Basically a three-head DBX equipped deck several models up the chain from my 245 so uh yeah it looks like this one's been on fire so this one might go even worse than the uh, than the sony did but we'll see what we can do for it but uh yeah in terms of the other cassette decks that i've had come in lately i've got the uh victor double d99 now that's the top of the line flagship model from 1982 that could be a good one, that could be a bad one. I paid 105 bucks for that one. I've got my uh, first Iowa double cassette deck over, over my uh, right shoulder here. That one's DBX equipped, so uh, I jumped on it. And I've got my first NAD tape deck back there somewhere too. It's just a two head. I don't know if I'm gonna like NAD at all, but uh, that's what that deck is here for me to find out. So enough talking, let's get into this. This is a pro audio machine, this beast. And it's Japanese market only, as you can tell from the almost non-existent English on this thing. There were two versions of this, the Mark I and Mark II. The Mark II has MDLP compatibility, so that's why I've got this. And if you remember me talking about this in the, the Marantz video, this one cost me 17 bucks. So uh, this was extremely cheap. In fact, it was so cheap that even this plus the next batch of mini discs, I had them throw in the box with it. I basically did not have to pay customs chargers into Canada for, for this one. It was that cheap. And, uh, oh yeah, I also had to buy the remote for this one too, because uh, this thing's crazy. Let me show it to you. Here's the remote. Nothing special on the surface, but uh, this one opens up. Check that out. You've got a full keyboard in there to play with. So, uh, yeah, hopefully all this stuff works because uh, the remote by itself was more money than this thing was. I think I paid 40 bucks for the remote. So, 
Should be fun. Anyhow, the complaint on this one was uh, the uh, CD changer mechanism just makes noise and doesn't do anything. Seller said absolutely nothing at all about the mini disc section, so I don't even know if that works. So uh, I figured 17 bucks, we'll get it in here and we'll give it a shot. These don't seem to be very popular over in Japan, so when I do find them, they're not very expensive. So I figured I'd gamble, and maybe if this one can't be brought back around, I'll get another one. We'll see. I have to decide I like this one first. All right, let me get power to it. I heard clunking noises. Power is on. We've got light up here. But we have no va vacuum fluorescent display in here. Man, those lights up uh, overhead are bright. I can't even really see what's going on in there. So yeah, CD1 indicator is also lit up. Huh, this could be a real basket case. Let's see if anything works. I'll try and eject CD1 here. And CD2 ejects. That is not the correct tray. Let's try the, the eject for CD2. Nothing doing there. Oh, there we go. Now we got CD2 to eject its own tray. So we might have a case of dirty buttons here. Try CD3. Nothing doing there. Oh wait, there it goes. It does work. Okay, let's see what else works. Okay, it's switching to CD2. Basically just make a noise there. All right, so inconsistent button operation. That's very indicative of uh, dirty button switches back in there. But uh, let me just fire up the home theater. I've got uh, audio running it, running it out of it right now. All right, home theater is online, so. Uh, we're ready to get some audio out of this, if it will give us any. But uh, before we start trying to play anything with this, let's take a look at the back panel. Because it's kind of crazy back here, too. Got all kinds of connections back here. RS-232. Don't know what these are at all. I would need to get my Translate app in order to tell. I already translated this one and figured out that was the line out. And so this must be the analog line in. And then you've got your opticals here. I'm just taking a look to see if the LEDs are on in there. They do not appear to be, so that might not be working. So that would be something else to figure out. But it also could be that it's so bright in here we can't see anything anyway. And this over here is likely JVC's synchro uh, stuff that they do with uh, their components. But uh, we need to see if this will give us audio. Let's try the mini disc first, see what that does. All right, it took it. How do I set this to mini disc operation? Oh wait, I see down here. Right now it's trying to play something in the in the CD trays because I hit play by uh, accident. Okay, now we're in MD mode. I don't hear anything happening. A display would be nice. Oh, 
Okay, I don't think it knows that there's an MD in the in the actual drive right now. That could be a problem. Let's try and eject it. Eject is not working. Great. Let me power cycle here. Okay, can we get mini disc now? Well, it spat it back out. Okay, it takes it in and spits it right back out. So we've got a problem with the mini disc section. Let's see if we get playback on the uh, CD section. We'll do tray three. And this shouldn't get any copyright issues, so uh, we'll try this CD. See if it plays. Switch over to CD, of course. Wait for it to figure out what it's doing. Okay, so we have CD playback. We just have nothing on the mini disc side, which is what I bought this thing for. So our order of business is to get inside this thing and try to figure out why the display isn't working, because we need to do that first before we can uh, probably get a lot of progress done on the mini disc side of things. So I'm going to kill the power here, and we're going to get inside it. Okay, cover is off and now we can see the insides. We've got two fuses, or no, three fuses right there. I do believe those are all in good shape. They look like it anyway. Might have to check those, but uh, very likely since this thing does play, all three of those are good. And by this thing, I mean the uh, CD section. Obviously the mini disc section does nothing, but uh, yeah, we're gonna have to figure out how to get access to the uh, front panel circuitry here so we can do work on this. And this mini disk drive does not appear to be the same thing that we've been dealing with before on the uh, the Marantz and the Bose Via. So uh, not a sharp transport this time I guess. So how do I get this faceplate off? Looks like a few screws have to come out. Look at the size of the feet on this thing. Basically like the ones I bought for my Marantz. Just identical sized. And by the way, the Marantz is still working just fine at 120 volts. I've been using it for weeks now, if you can believe that. That video's been done for a long time now. So, how do I get this off? I think there's two catches on either side. It doesn't look like the uh, CD trays will be a problem. Oh, I smell cigarette smoke. I bet that's the problem with the mini disc. Dirty pickup or something. Could be worse than that. We'll see. Oh, come on. Why aren't you letting go? There are catches underneath too, a little bit, but uh, I don't think that's exactly the problem here, but I could be wrong. I think the headphone board comes out with the front panel. This one right down there. So 
so I'm going to try to free this up. And we've got a machine screw there. Yeah, that does appear to be the problem. So I'm going to disconnect this ribbon cable here because it goes to the front panel. And there's another one back in here. If I can show you. There's another big ribbon cable back there, so uh, I'm sure that one has to come up. I believe it's unplugged from uh, down in here. I don't know if I really want to unplug it from there or not. I might be able to access this connector a little easier. Okay, I've got another ribbon cable to free up here. This one right here runs to the front panel. I should be checking these ribbon cables as I uh, disconnect them to see if there's any damaged connector contacts on them. Does not appear to be an issue though. Okay, we've got another ribbon cable. This one right here, I'm going to unplug from back here, I think. Okay, and this one immediately pulled out. So I get to fight with that later. And it's damaged. So won't that be fun to reconnect? Anyway, we've got the uh, faceplate ready to go here. So we're going to try to look for reasons why the display isn't working. I'm going to focus first on the vacuum fluorescent display solder joints here. I already see a bunch of bad ones. Yeah, this one here is cracked. Oh, you can't see that. That one right there is cracked. And, uh, let's see. Several down here are cracked as well. So I'm going to have to go through all of these boards just to make sure that, uh, all bad solder joints are touched up, and then we'll put this back together. Ah, uh, fun. 34 degree day, and I gotta fire up the soldering iron. Oh yeah, there's bad solder joints all over this thing. And I mean all over it. The entire vacuum fluorescent display needs to be resoldered. So we're gonna do that. What, a JVC with bad solder joints? Who would have thought? All right, folks. Got the vacuum fluorescent display completely resoldered. There weren't too many other solder joints that had problems that I could find in the any of the uh, front panel boards. And I realized I could have taken a look at these uh, switches while I had this apart, but uh, I've got the remote, so I'm not worried about those. Usually those kinds of switches I just replace rather than try to clean, because once you clean them, they get dirty again right away, I find. So, uh, so how about we see if we got a display back? Ooh, there is a display, but it's very dim. Emergency stop is... showing, I think. Let me kill the big lights and we'll see what's in there. Yeah, it's flashing emergency stop for some reason. I don't know what that's about. Could be some issues with a uh, button or with a uh, detection switch in the uh, in the CD transport. Or something else? I don't know. I don't know what that emergency stop stuff is at all. I'm going to reload the CD. The home theater is off currently, but uh, I just want to see what happens when it goes to play this. Yeah, this is extremely high hours, this machine. If it weren't, that display wouldn't be that dim.
Didn't even try to play that time. Let me try the remote. It's easier at this point. Let's see here. I don't know which button does what because the remote's all in Japanese. I think. I'm going to push buttons until something happens. Are those not the transport controls? I don't know what's going on with this thing. Now the disc spun. Maybe it's because I've got the top open and there is still one light on overhead. Let's try one of the other trays. Okay, hit eject for number one and get number two. Let's try number two. Yeah, are you seeing what I'm seeing? It looks like it's it thinks there's discs in two in number one and two, but nothing in number three. So there is a problem in there. Yeah, I'm going to guess it's just dirty switches in the uh, CD transport. I think what it's trying to do is cycle through the... Uh, the disc trays to figure out where the CD is. Okay, we got the... Oh, still got emergency stop here. Let's go to... No, not number three. We want number two. Okay, there it goes. Now it's spitting up. It looks like it is playing. I don't have my remote with me to... Uh, do anything with the uh, home theater right now. That emergency stop thing is weird. I don't know exactly what that's about or what to do about it. I do have the owner's manual though, so I think I'm probably going to consult that next. No, you give me the transport I'm asking for here. Thank you. I want my CD back, is all. Okay, so... Let's try the mini disc again, see what happens. Okay, I saw the little play icon light up in the mini disc, but uh, nothing. Let's power cycle. Okay, we got emergency stop to quit. And did you see what I see? It said that there was no disc right away after reading table of contents. Let's see what happens this time. Okay, so I'm gonna assume emergency stop has something to do with the mini disc, mini disc situation. So uh, I'm gonna shut you off real quick. I'm gonna put these lights back on so I can see what I'm doing and then we'll get the mini disc transport out of there. Oh, wonder of wonders. It had to be a bunch of surface mount capacitors. How much you want to bet all these things are toast? Let me get the ESR meter and we'll find out. 
At least they're in a location here where I can actually replace them if I have to with regular parts. Unlike these uh, sharp transport units I've been dealing with. Looks like 10 microfarads. That really is 19 ohms, isn't it? Next one, 19 ohms. 4.7. There's no voltage ratings on any of these 19 ohms. We are not doing well with these capacitors. Okay, 22 microfarads. No reading, it's shot. I should be looking for uh, corrosion and electrolyte as well, but I don't see any so far. 7.8 ohms for the big 100 microfarad. This one's 47. What does this give us? 1.3. That one's good. How about this one? 1.5 ohms. That one's good too. So yeah, we've got two good ones and one, two, three, four, five bad ones. Wonderful. And I've got some new cutters coming that would help me cut these things off better but uh, unfortunately they never showed up yet so uh, I'm gonna have to do some googling try to find out what voltage ratings these things are and then start replacing on those but uh, let me remove this ribbon cable here I don't want to get out the anti-static Mac and I want to set this down on the other side so we can take a look at the uh, pickup because that's probably dirty as well. Okay, I'll set that ribbon cable aside. All right, I've got access to the optical pickup now. I don't know if you can see anything. It's about as far as I can zoom you in. It's just right down there. It's a little cloudy, so it might not work the best once I fix it because this is clearly a high hours machine there might be some uh, issues with that pickup now and I don't know where I would find another pickup for this all right and I'm gonna try to get the right head as well Sometimes when you throw a dirty mini disc into these things that you can get debris stuck to the right head and uh, it tends to scratch the discs when you when that happens so uh, I'd like to try to at least gently brush the right head as well. But yeah, I don't see any other issues up top here. I'm betting if we just replace those capacitors it'll start working again. At least that's what I'm hoping. And we still got to do some work on the uh, CD section as well. Check this out. Look at that capacitor. You see how brown that is? Watch this. Flavor country. All right, folks, there you have it. Completely recapped. All seven of them. And I knew these little guys were going to look good on there, and they do. But unfortunately, these do stick up just far enough that you can't put this down flat on a surface anymore. Thankfully, it's not going to be a problem in there. There's plenty of room. So uh, how about I get this reinstalled, and then we'll see if we got our mini disc back. Applying power to the machine. I saw emergency stop again, and it's still doing that. Fortunately, I know I can just power cycle it again to clear that. Maybe. Anyway, we'll see if we can get the mini disc to do something now.
Uh, it's still doing that emergency stop thing. Uh, there might still be a problem with the mini disc. That's okay, it always was a long shot with this thing. Yeah, still nothing. Stand by. Okay, so we're gonna try and uh, load a disc with the cover off and see what happens if it even tries to spin up at all. That's what I'm wondering. Can it just not spin the disc up or something? What's going on here? So let's bring our power back on. It says MD no disc in the front, so let's see if what happens here. No attempt at spinning it up. So, uh, we might have an issue with the motor. Let's see if I can find it here. It's buried way in there. So, let me see if I can find a uh, dental pick of appropriate dimensions. And we're just going to get in there and try to see if I can uh, move the spindle. That could be the problem here, is the uh, motor's not working or seized up or something. Like I said, it is high hours, so uh, power is still applied, so I'm trying to be careful. Spindle is not locked up. So let's see if it does something now. Nope, no attempt. Let me get another disc and we'll try that. Nope, it's not spinning up either. I got a bad feeling the pickup is dead on this thing. That's what I'm thinking. I find it unlikely that the motor would be completely dead on the uh, spindle side of things. And I am seeing more surface mount capacitors that I didn't find. They're on the other side of the board this time. Great, I guess I gotta take this all back apart again. Okay, looks like I'm going to have to disconnect the pickup, which is going to be ever so much fun. It's way down in there. Then it's going to be even more fun to reconnect that. And yes, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more capacitors to deal with. Great. Wonderful. I wanted to do that today. Bunch more capacitors. All right, let me get started tracking these down and doing them, and I'll get back with you. All right, I have officially changed all of the bad capacitors now. These two are the only that only ones that tested bad on this side of the board, so I decided to leave it there because the rest of them require uh, capacitors I don't have anymore. I'm running low on capacitors that are small enough to uh, do this job, so uh, yeah, I did get all of the uh, capacitors ready. Like, uh, I would have to go with these for... Uh, what was it, the uh, 47 microfarad ones, but they're a little bit large. And then I had one more here, 100 at 25, but uh, I'm running seriously low on capacitors this size, so I only did the one. The other one measured good, so uh, hopefully we got it working now. I have my, my doubts on this. I don't think I got anything working, but uh, it was worth a try, so... Uh, let me get this back together and we'll see if it works now.
Okay, back together well enough for testing. Cross your fingers. I'm telling you right now, if this mini disc session still doesn't work, I am not going to go any further with this machine. It's just not worth it. Most likely I'll, I'll turn it into a parts deck and uh, see if I can find another one of these to go with it. Maybe, I don't know. I might just recycle this one. I don't really like it that much. But uh, for 17 bucks plus 90 bucks shipping, it was worth the, the, uh, the attempt. Okay. MD no disc. I'm gonna try and see if it loads one now. Got further this time, it said TOC reading, but it didn't really do anything. Still didn't get the motor spinning up. Okay, we actually made progress. I'm going to have to look into the uh, the motor drive circuit and see what's going on there. I don't know if I can really test the uh, MD motor or not, but uh, I might have to try and find a way to do that. Well, folks, I got some bad news. I tested the spindle motor and it's shot. You can see I've got a couple of component leads soldered there. What I did was I clipped a couple of test leads there and I ran the thing off of a uh, 1.5 volt battery that I just dropped. And no turny. So uh, the spindle motor is dead and needing replacement. And unfortunately I have nothing around here that, that could possibly replace it. So this is going to be the end of the story for this particular deck. It wants to read the disc. It tries to read the disc, but it can't spin it up. So. Uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Hate to say it, but uh, you can't fix them all, but at least we made an attempt. Anyhow, I guess I'm going to put this back together and throw it on a shelf or something until I decide what to do with it. That's going to be it for today, guys. See you in the next one. Take care.